What's going on, everybody? Today, we're rattling off 37 tips or pieces of advice for junior software engineers. And whenever you put together a list like this, of course, there's going to be some exceptions. So if you have some thoughts about my tips, leave a comment. Let's have a discussion. But before we throw 10 minutes on the clock and start going through this rapid fire, I got to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to create your website. This can be your developer blog, your developer portfolio, maybe you're advertising your contracting services. Squarespace can take care of that for you. And I get it, we're developers, right? We, we wanna build it ourselves. What I found in my career is that I would rather spend my time building my own products, my own projects than my personal website. And Squarespace can take that all off your plate. So if you don't already have a developer website, go check out squarespace.com slash Sean Allen for 10% off. And thank you again, Squarespace, for sponsoring today's video. All right, let's throw 10 minutes on the clock and get right into this. I got a list right in front of me and these are really in no particular order. But number one, don't worry about memorizing things, right? I think a lot of people think that they have to know how to build everything off the top of their head. They just go there and type, type, type. No, even the most senior developers Google the most basic stuff all the time. The key here, you gotta know where to find it, whether that's previous projects or you know where to go in the documentation. That's the name of the game. Know where to find it. Don't worry about memorizing. Number two, you gotta learn how to learn. Right? This industry is constantly evolving. Technology is constantly changing. The one thing that will be constant is that you're going to have to learn new stuff all the time in this career. So learn how you learn, whether you're an audio learner, you like to read books, you like to watch videos, figure out the best way you learn things and get really good at that because you're never going to stop learning in this career. And number three, sticking with the learning topic, repetition is key, right? You don't just learn one thing in programming and then you know it, right? You know it by doing it over and over and over and over again. Repetition is the key. Number four, don't fall into the tutorial trap. I think a lot of people when they're just learning, do this tutorial, do that tutorial. They just do endless tutorials. Your learning will really take a leap when you start building your own projects. When there's no cookie cutter recipe for you to follow, you gotta figure it out on your own. That's when you're gonna take the leap as a developer. Number five, and this will help you get out of that tutorial trap, is learn how to read the documentation for your language. I understand not every language's documentation is created equal. Some are great, some are not so great, but that's what you gotta work with. And knowing how to read the documentation, how to use the documentation as a resource, again, that gets you out of the tutorial trap. You're not relying on other people's tutorials. You can dive into the documentation and figure it out for yourself. That is a vital skill. Number six, this goes along the lines of once you're actually working on a project is learn to understand the cost benefit analysis of your work. A good way to think about that is each feature has like a spectrum of complexity, right? You may have an idea for a feature. There may be a super simple, easy to implement version of that. It may not be as robust as you want it, but again, you gotta manage how much time it's gonna take you to build it versus the benefits you're going to get. So along that spectrum of super simple basic version to really complex robust version, there's a whole spectrum of versions in the middle. So learning to balance that cost benefit analysis of the time you're putting into it uh, is key when you're building products. Number seven, let's talk about the am I a junior developer, mid-level developer, senior developer? When can I call myself what? I think that's an irrelevant question. Don't even worry about that. You could ask 10 different developers. You're probably gonna get 10 different answers. It's very abstract, very vague. Stop wasting your time thinking about that. Number eight, find a mentor if you can, whether you have somebody in person that you met at a meetup or you know maybe build a relationship with somebody on Twitter. Finding a mentor early on can make or break your career. And along those lines, number nine, join Twitter. Uh, developers hang out on Twitter. It's where they talk and communicate. It's an amazing place to network, especially if you don't live in a development hub but use this as to build relationships over time. Like I consider Twitter probably the most powerful tool in my developer career. Just the people I've met, the networking I've done, I've gotten job interviews for DMing people I know on Twitter. It's just, it's amazing. Build your Twitter, uh, join the community, be active, be known. It's one of the most important things in my opinion. Moving on to number 10, go to meetups if you can. I understand uh, you have to be in a bigger city to probably do this um, and Twitter's a good backup if you're not, but if you can go to in-person meetups, so valuable. Your network is your net worth. I mean, so many career opportunities happen based on, oh, I met so-and-so at a meetup and then I got a job. Like it's just, it's real. It happens. Go to meetups if you can. Number 12 might be the most important on this list. And I genuinely believe in this, but if you're a junior developer, you have to create a very visual uh, portfolio website. You got to showcase your work, which brings us back to today's sponsor, Squarespace. Like I said, in the beginning, you may have the desire to build your own 
I'm of the opinion, like let, let a site like Squarespace handle that. It's super quick and easy to get something up. The sites look beautiful, looks very professional. You can host your blog on there, which you should be creating content. That's a little sneak peek at a, a future uh, tip. Uh, your portfolio, which is huge. Again, like pointing people to a GitHub with no pictures and people have to download and run your code. Like you need to give them pretty pictures to look at. I know that sounds superficial, but you gotta pass that superficial eye test in order for people to take a deeper look at you. And again, building your site on Squarespace is an easy way to handle that. Your blog, your portfolio, again, advertising your contracting services if you're looking for work. It's got analytics built in and all the SEO built in as well. You don't have to worry about that. So if you're ready to get your developer website up and running, head over to squarespace.com to start your free trial. And then when you're ready to launch it, go to squarespace.com slash Sean Allen to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And apparently, I don't know how to count. That was tip number 11, not number 12 off by one errors, am I right? Anyway, tip number 12 is to create smaller portfolio projects. I believe you need to create a lot of smaller projects that can demonstrate a lot of different skills and showcase that on your portfolio. Don't get me wrong, there's value in shipping a full product, like actually completing it. But at the same time, if you do that, you may only have one. I think it's also good to show many different examples of what you can do. Moving on to tip number 13, that is your GitHub repo readmes. Make them visual you know, put in pictures of the website or app you're working on. Uh, animated GIFs are even better to show in action, but it's it's pretty bad when you go to a GitHub repo, the readme is empty or if it's just a paragraph and then you got to dig in the code to figure out what it is. Having nice looking pictures or animated GIFs to see the project in action in the readme, awesome, do that. And number 14 is along those lines and just in general, but I think developers should have a basic level of design skills. I'm not saying you need to be a professional designer, but you should have some understanding of design, in my opinion, if you're making consumer products like apps or websites. All right, let's talk about some job stuff. Number 15, and this goes out to those that are trying to get that first developer job, because this is hard, I get it. But try to find the right fit, not the first offer for your first job. And I know like it, it's hard to get that first developer job. So the first offer you get is amazing. You're super pumped, like, hell yeah, I'll take anything. I'm gonna ask you to fight that a little bit because your very first job can either catapult you and launch you or hold you back because you learn bad habits and it's not a good experience. It can really make a difference in the direction of your career. Number 16 is along those lines uh, and this may be a controversial one. I'm sure I'll get some pushback in the comments, but take less money if you have to, if it's the right fit. Uh, just using some American, maybe San Francisco numbers for junior developers, say maybe a job is 75,000 one offer, but it's an amazing fit and another offers 90,000 a year, but it's kind of a crappy fit and doesn't look great. Like, yeah, you know, $15,000 a year is a decent amount of money in difference, but I'm telling you, it will compound over time to take the less money for the much better team, better product, better fit. That is going to outpace that extra 15 grand by a mile uh, in the long run. All right, number 17, and I may get some pushback for this as well, but I think you should spend an early chapter, and again, a chapter of your career in a major tech hub. You know, the San Francisco's, Austin's, London, uh, a big city with a lot of tech in it. And, you know, of course there's pros and cons with that. Usually those are very expensive, uh, but the network you're gonna get living in a tech hub is amazing and again, can compound over the whole course of your career. So I understand people may not wanna live in a large city like San Francisco, uh, cause it's expensive, but just do two, three, four years there and then move on. And just like I said, the network you're gonna get and take with you for the rest of your career, so worth it. Number 18 is a contracting freelancing kind of tip. I would do a full-time job first and start contracting and freelancing on the side as like a side hustle to kind of feel it out, get used to it before jumping in full-time. I think a lot of people want to start their careers as full-time remote contractors managing the project themselves. That is the dream. I understand why you'd want that. Again, for the long-term health of your career, I think it's very beneficial to start off at a company, do the contracting as a side hustle for a little bit, and then switch. Number 19 is just a general tip throughout your career, and that is show initiative. Um, show that you care about the project. So if you're a junior developer on a project and you wanna implement this one feature, go to your senior developer and say, hey, you know, I wanna implement this feature. I think it'd be really great. I put a lot of thought into it. I think we could do it this way, this way, this way. What do you think? Even if they turn you down, just showing the initiative uh, is going to be valuable and just apply that to like all kinds of cases, again, throughout your whole career. Number 20 is another crazy important skill and just in life, and that is learn to communicate better. Uh, if you can, as an engineer, break down these complex engineering problems and explain that to either project managers or maybe the CEO if you're in a smaller startup and making them understand like why this is taking so long or the trade-offs between solution A and solution B. 
being able to explain that to engineers is one thing. That's a, you got to do that too. But being able to break it down into, you know, layman's terms for non-engineers and helping them understand, again, that will make you so valuable to your company. Number 21, again, when you're working on a team, just show that you care. And this kind of goes along with the showing the initiative, but we all know that person you work with or have worked with in the past that you can tell they're here for the nine to five job. They hate being here. They're just here for the paycheck. They don't care about what's going on. Like you've worked with that person. Hopefully you weren't that person, but don't be that person. Uh, Cause again, your reputation will follow you through your whole career. So if you are showing initiative, you show that you're passionate about your work, uh, that's gonna go a long way for your career. And along those lines, number 22, impress everywhere you go. Like I just mentioned, your reputation will follow you, especially if you're in a tech hub like San Francisco or any other city, it's a small community. Your reputation is a big deal. So at every stop, whether that's a contract or you know a company, do your best to put your best foot forward and impress people. Number 23 is a common misconception. You're not too old. I started learning how to code at 32 years old. I get questions from people all the time that are like 24 that think they're way too old. And I had this misconception as well. I thought you had to be a child math prodigy to be a computer programmer. That is not the case. And a lot of people are worried about like age discrimination in Silicon Valley. I don't see that. In fact, a lot of the engineers I work with are late 20s, early 30s, 40s. Like it's, it's, I think it's stereotypical to think it's for young people. It's really not. Number 24, another beneficial thing you can do for your career, if you can do it, this one's not for everybody, but that is to create content and build an online presence. That can be many things. Uh, that can be a blog, that can be a podcast, that can be YouTube videos. You can just have a, a great Instagram profile. Having an online presence and kind of being known within your developer community, whether that's Swift, JavaScript, uh, whatever, Android, having that online presence and being known, uh, hopefully known in a good way, uh, again, will benefit you. It's another way to network. Uh, you'll get a lot of opportunities if you become a known presence in your community. Number 25, if you're still learning or trying to get that first job, be patient. This is a long journey. So many people ask, how can I become a developer as fast as possible? That's the wrong attitude to have. This is a long journey, but I promise you, it's worth it at the end. Number 26, let's talk about the 90-90 rule. Some people call it the 80-20 rule. This has been called many different things, but the point remains the same. When you're building software, there's the first 90%, and then there's the second 90%. The first 90% is getting like most of the features done. It feels like it's so close to being done. The second 90% is all the air handling, the polish, you know, adjusting for different screen sizes. You think it's a lot of little nitpicky stuff, but it really adds up into being like the second 90% of the project. It's a lot, and it really sneaks up on a lot of junior developers. Number 27, should you learn this language or that language? It doesn't really matter, to be honest with you. If you do what you enjoy the most, my example, I enjoyed iOS development. I like the iPhone, so I wanted to build for that. If you do what you enjoy, uh, you're going to become good at it, most likely. If you ever have to switch languages, learning that second language is infinitely easier than learning how to program for the first time. So switching later on down the line could be relatively easy if you have to do that. Number 28, let's talk about getting job interviews. Uh, don't go through the front door if you don't have to. What is, what is the front door? That is going to airbnb.com slash apply. Uh, that's very hard to break through that way. Again, back to networking on Twitter. If you start to get to know engineers at these companies, uh, build a relationship with them, DM them, say, hey, can you refer me for a job? Most likely they'll say yes, and that's pretty much a guaranteed interview, and then it's up to you. Number 29, when you're learning, I suggest completely immersing yourself, watching YouTube videos, subscribing to newsletters, subscribing to blogs, just completely soak up everything you can. And along with that, number 30, let's talk about podcasts. Podcasts are a great way to immerse yourself because you can multitask with podcasts. Uh, commuting to work, throw on a developer podcast. Going out for a walk, throw on a developer podcast. So podcasts are a great way to immerse yourself. Number 31, when it comes to getting contracts when you're ready, your personal and professional network will be the best. And by best, I mean getting opportunities, but also getting quality opportunities. Going on sites like Upwork, you never know what you're going to get. You could get some really crappy projects, but if you're recommended uh, by a friend or a former coworker to another company, those are going to be quality contracts. And that is how I've gotten all my contracts. Number 32, should you work at a small startup or a big company? As with any programming question, it depends. If you like to wear many hats, you consider yourself a generalist, you want to build the whole app or the whole website, that's a small startup. Uh, if you want to work on a very large team on a large company and be very specialized, that's a big company. So your personal preference comes into play. Also, obviously the larger company, probably a larger paycheck, but maybe more stressful. Smaller startup, uh, smaller paycheck, could be less or more stressful, it depends. Number 33, preparing for job interviews. Big tip, 
It takes months to prepare for these data structures and algorithms questions. Practice, 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 practice. What I've done in the past that has messed me up is two weeks before the interview, I'm like, okay, I'll start studying. That is not enough time. Give yourself a couple months, not a couple weeks. Number 34, remote work has its downsides, right? It's the dream to work wherever you want, whenever you want, remotely. Uh, that sounds like the dream, but, and it is fun for like six months. It's like the honeymoon period. After doing it for a year or two, it really starts to have its drawbacks, the loneliness, you're, you're by yourself most of the time, not working with people. And again, that may sound great, but after a long time of that, it starts to wear on you. Number 35, is a dev bootcamp worth it? Uh, what I have found the knowledge you get, no, it's not worth that $10,000 potentially. However, forcing you to do it every day for eight to 10 hours for X amount of weeks, uh, getting the experience of working with other people, that is absolutely worth it. So uh, if you think you can be a good self-starter and learn on your own, I think you should probably save the 10 grand. However, if you like the extra push to force yourself to do it uh, for eight to 10 hours a day, I think a bootcamp is worth it. And number 36, after all these tips, it gets easier. Like experience in this industry matters, right? This may have been an overwhelming video throwing a lot at you. And I know you may be learning and it may feel overwhelming, but before you know it, you're gonna wake up and five years has gone by and you're like, holy crap, I, I know a lot of stuff now. So it does get easier, stick with it, I promise. And of course, number 37 is to uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel or any other developer YouTube channels. Again, immerse yourself. Uh, I put out iOS development content specifically, but I do talk about general software engineering stuff a lot as well. So those are my 37 quick tips. I hope you got something out of this. Let me know in the comments if you disagreed with anything. Let's have a discussion. We'll see you in the next video.